Um, good afternoon and welcome to Morris Federation online event. And uh, today uh, we have myself, Pauline Woods Wilson, and Dennis Taylor hosting, and also Andrew Knight hosting. And we've got Brian Kell and Douglas Kell uh, from the Whittlesea Straw Bear to tell you all about the last 40 years of Straw Bear. So handing you straight over to Brian Kell. You're mute, Dad. Right. I read the list today and it frightened me to death to think that there was all these people wanted to hear what I wanted to say. This is not an academic presentation. This is just a, 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 an ad hoc lump of memories. And the one big memory in front of me at the moment is me lying poleaxed on the marketplace in uh, 1984 when I decided, for better or worse, that I would not drink beer during the day, but I would drink whiskey. And all the Morris teams bought me whiskey and I fell over coming out the last pub. And had to be carried back to the marketplace but there we are so we'll get that little bit of uh, history over with at the beginning because somebody invariably reminds me of that during the talk and i seem to have frozen i'm sorry ah there we are <coughs> i'll start with a song Joy, health, love and peace be all here in this place. By your leave I will sing concerning our king. Our king is well dressed in silks of the best with ribbons so rare. No king can compare. We have travelled many miles over hedges and stiles in search of our king. Unto who you we bring, we have powder and shot. For to conquer the lot, we have cannon and ball to conquer them all. Did you would you great joy to the new? I think I got muted in the middle of that, but I don't know. It, it, the warning came up on my screen. Anyway, what's hunting the wren got to do with straw bears? Well, when initially it doesn't seem to have anything to do with straw bears except for one or two things. A situation where people get dressed up in funny clothes and have an as the writer here says an out of body or out of everyday life experience that's certainly straw bear uh, it happens around about christmas time or midwinter that's certainly straw bear as well and just generally speaking it is in connection with what goes on in the dark days of midwinter. And these are the Wren boys in Ireland. I would love to have had them in Straw Bear or get them over for Straw Bear, but quite honestly, I don't think we could afford it to get them transported across. But the connections there uh, and the costumes, as you can see, are all in, uh, are made out of straw. Uh, and why straw? Well, I think. There was nothing significant about it. It just there was a lot of it lying around the farmyards, and so costumes were made out of straw. And there's some more straw costumes from Shetland, and this time it's Halloween time. But obviously there are limitations on how you can construct a costume with straw, so they all tend to be a little bit the same. But I think these kids are great. They're smashing. 
And I'd, I love to think that they still go out in Shetland at Halloween time and wearing that kit. Absolutely fabulous. This was basically how I found out about straw bears. And it was Ashley Hutchins' Rattleborn and Ploughjack, a long playing record, uh, which talks about a bear, a man, completely swathed in straw and led by a string around people's houses and money was expected and the police had decided they want to ban the straw bear because it was begging because under the Victorian Vagrancy Acts it was illegal to beg um, and I don't think those acts actually have ever been rescinded but I could be corrected and this was a communication sent to uh, the author of The Golden Bow uh, DJ Framer, Fraser, sorry, uh, <coughs> and he was a, Fraser was a member of the Harry Wakeland Smith family who was a hero of Ali Wall and the other famous person from Whittlesea. In connection with that, there were two pictures. Uh, and these are the only pictures we've got of what this, we thought the straw bear looked like at the turn of the 1900s. Uh, and they are with permission of the Folklore Society. And as you can see, it's a person absolutely covered in straw. And this person with the straw bear is uh, the collector or we call him the minder now initially we thought these were pictures from the straw bear in january but on reflection with a bit of research that we've done over the last year or so we think these are pictures from a carnival which was held on shrove tuesday by the brickyard workers and this guy here has got his collection tin and they would they had a great carnival and collected for charitable things around the town which actually might have been true uh, because when i was researching straw bears right at the very beginning of everything i went into the whittle sea museum and i said what do you know about straw bears and they said we don't know a lot but they were brickyard workers. So it could have been true. But uh, I, we, we think now that these are not from January, but perhaps the Shrove Tuesday Carnival. Unfortunately, we haven't got any other pictures of the carnival procession in our possessions. So in 1980, a straw bear went out on the street for the first time we think in 70 years and you notice we were being true to public health and uh, doing things properly because we only crossed the six or five when the green man was flashing as this picture proves uh, and with the straw bear that year were the Northampton Morris men the Rutland Morris Men and Stevenage Sword Dancers. Now I've got a great connection with Stevenage Sword because I was one of the founder members in 1973 of Stevenage Sword and these lads or this dance team should I say have been the only dance team which have attended every Straw Bear Festival since the start and I love them a bit. But what about molly dancing, you might say? Well, we didn't have any molly dancers at the first straw bear because they were all at a thing called Dance in England. <laughs> and uh, so we had molly dancers on the Sunday after on Straw Bear Day. And these are molly dancers from Little Downham uh, and the pictures uh, by William Palmer and you see a black face musician and this character the musician 
is actually the man that gave us the tune which we use for the Straw Bear Festival. And next to him is the collector, suitably adorned with ribbons. And in 1981, the straw bear hit the streets again and you will notice there is a tremendous amount of people standing watching. Uh, and this was the, the start of the band and the start of using the tune. The first year we went out we didn't have the tune. The second year we had a little band and we played the tune which is featured again on Rattlebone and Plowjack and it's attributed to Heart of My Heart by George Green. And this was the route we took around the town in those days. Uh, I estimated it was probably about four to five miles by the time we got round and we were out on the street all day. We didn't close the roads, we had no road closures we just told the police what we were going to do and they turned up if the if they had a had a car and followed us round and the rest of the time we just got on with it um sadly it's not quite so free and easy nowadays as it, as it was then uh, and it was quite a quite a marathon around the town How we constructed the bear? Well, I made representations to the Whittlesea Society uh, in 1979 uh, and said, I'd like to revive the straw bear. And they said, great, wonderful, go and do it. And that was it. They offered no help whatsoever as to how it was built because nobody knew. So I sat down with a blank bit of paper and I said, how am I going to work this with this material that I'd never experienced working with before? And so what we have is a jacket and pads of straw, which is bundled together and stitched to the jacket and a, a pair of bib and brace. And basically we just spend the time building the thing up. Across the shoulders is a support for the head frame and the uh, straw is attached to the head frame and that these, these little tubes slide down into those tubes underneath the costume and that's how our straw bear can dance. Now that's quite relative uh, to what's gonna I'm gonna talk about later on because we are the only straw bear that dances as far as I'm aware and this is a completed kit which was done in 2015 we tend to try in in, in better times to build in public at, at events so that people can come up and talk to us and find out about the event uh, if not it's done in my in my garage or someone else's garage and it's uh, pretty cold and miserable this time of the year but there we are and the midterm the event suddenly started to take off and you'll notice in the background there's a little fellow here now he's the little bear don't call him a baby bear because he gets really annoyed about that and you will notice now that all of a sudden there are lots and lots of people following the bear and we have a banner and a band and a big bass drum and people dressed in strange costumes and strange clothing which you Morris people will think is perfectly normal but not for these people from from Whittlesea They'd never seen anything like this in their life. Uh, and all of them have grabbed and seized the opportunity to wear something colourful and slightly off-key. And during those middle years, we had regular attendees to Straw Bear. Red Leicester, who would come in their winter garb rather than their Cotswold Morris garb. 
Ramrug from Hertfordshire. The Witchman, which is a contradiction in terms, from Northamptonshire. Southport Sword Dancers. And Peterborough Morris. Now these were just a smattering of those who attended at the time. Um, I was a member of Peterborough Morris at the time, so they were very, very keen to come along and join us on the day. Um, unfortunately, they didn't make the first straw bear because their squire at the time said they weren't good enough. So the event, as you can see now, is expanding quite dramatically. And some more from Cheshire. Great set of lasses these. And Abolition Dancing. Now, shock, horror, gasp. Why have you got Abolition Dancing in a British festival? Well, two things really. It's popular with the general public. And secondly, there is a great tradition in the British Isles for step dancing. Uh, in the, my native northeast, in Scotland, in the northwest, and in East Anglia. Um, and as you probably are aware, the, the step dancing styles went across to America in the very early days and it morphed in some instances to this style of dancing. Then it came back again and certainly fitted in with a, a lot of the local people's perception of what folk dancing is about uh, uh, and sheer enjoyment and the music in particular. Uh, so I feel quite confident that Appalachian dancing should be part of our event because there's some great teams and they come ev every year to see us. But there's always the Molly dancers and these are just a smattering of a few of them. Gog Magog from Cambridgeshire. The Use Washers in their black face garb, which is slightly tempered now. The Pig Dyke Molly Dancers from Peterborough. Or Yaxley, should I say. And Maple Molly Dancers. Now I think these lads are great. I've been out with Maple on Plough Monday on a number of occasions. Uh, they're great. At the time we used to go out with them regularly, they would meet once a year to practice, then turn out on Plough Monday and on Straw Bear Day. And to be quite frank with you, the quality of their dancing reflected this one practice. But they were a great set of lads and they just had a whale of a time and, and I loved them to bits and uh, they are very very special to me. I remember turning up one day and uh, we they always meet in a pub 10 o'clock in the morning and we met in the pub and there was two dancers and me. So they turned around, the two dancers turned around and said well I'm really pleased you've come Brian and I said oh that's nice to see you. Yeah he says you're the music for the day. So <laughs> So I said, oh, all right, then what's the tune? So one of them got a penny whistle out and played the tune for me. So I then learned it on the mouth organ and I drove across the fens practicing this damn tune on the mouth organ so I could play for them for their next spot. Uh, and it, the, the whole of the day was just absolutely mad, just like that. They did get more dancers and uh, musicians as the day went on, but I was a bit scary on my own. Good job there was only two of them. But this is a nice one. About 30 years ago, one of the schools in Whittlesea decided they wanted to be part of the event and they got the children to do some molly dancing. And we imported a tutor to teach them. And they have been providing a dance team to every straw bear since then. Uh, and this young lady here 
is now our membership secretary so it's part and parcel of the grand circle of things and and they're great but and a big but we thought we were unique and in 1998 we found out that there was a, a town in Germany that had some straw bears so we contacted them and said you have straw bears and they said yes we got straw bears and we said to them oh we're going to come and see you and they said no you're not we are coming to see you first so they they came by coach uh, and they came for one day and went back by coach the day after and the town was in Voldern, in Oldenwald. And they had a contact with a, with a school in Ramsey, which is a town about 12 miles away from Riddlesey. So we went out to Voldern to see them, to meet their bears. And this is them in the center of their town, stopping the traffic, demanding money with menaces. And there's not a policeman in sight and most of the people just appreciated that that's what's going to happen on what they call rose monday and um, they shrug their shoulders put put their their coinage in the collecting pot and then carry on but th these are their bears their bears are made out of oat straw which is old-fashioned oat straw so it's long and it is actually tied to the body so the people who are going to what we would call drive the bear will stand there in the morning and there'll be a gang of uh, builders who will wrap the straw around their body and they will in this instance wire them in to the straw costume and they're in it for about four hours um, and then when they finish the proceedings on the day they will then be cut out of the costume because there's no way to get out of it by just disrobing as it were at least with our straw bear we can take the costume off and on but these guys can't so don't ask the obvious question because they can't And they tour around the town with what they call clunes. Uh, and they are brightly coloured. Yeah, that sounds familiar. Costumes with coloured faces. And they tour around the town knocking on doors and begging uh, and expecting a recompense of either money or sweets or sausages or... Um, pastries depending on whose door they are knocking on and this goes round the town all day and it's on Rose Monday which is the Monday before Shrove Tuesday uh, this is the year it snowed but that didn't daunt them they went out and round the streets and shock horror why have they got the washing out you might ask well, the tale that they tell was that some of their township went to Cologne to see Cologne's carnival. And they came back with a time full of this wonderful carnival with lots of bunting across the streets. But the people in Valdern said, we can't afford bunting, so we'll hang the washing out instead. <laughs> and every year they hang the washing out. <laughs> And it's just a bit of bizarre German sense of humour, actually. I think it's fabulous. These, be these beautiful medieval buildings have got the washing hanging out. Yeah, that's great. And they're all very serious about it as well. But there, as I say, they'll visit the bakers and have a little dance outside. And knock on doors and the bears will dance with ladies. But down the road... There's some other bears from the town of Buchen. And these bears are made out of pea straw. 
Again, the straw is tied to the body, but this time they use string rather than wire. And they've got lovely papier mâché heads and a very nice red bow tie. And they are extremely naughty. And they will run at a crowd and they will pretend to attack them and just generally make a nuisance of themselves. Uh, and you'll notice in the background here, this is the traditional costume from Buchan. And these costumes are made out of felt strips. And what they do is they, they will make the costume over the winter. And then once it's been out, they will then keep the costume and it'll pass down from, from one person to another in, within the family. So the, these costumes have been in their families for a long, long time. Down the road again, a little bit further out from Voldern, is Hettingen. And these straw bears are again made out from pea straw. But you will notice they haven't got heads on them, straw heads. They just have blackened faces. And these bears are extremely aggressive. And they will run and intimidate the crowd who's standing watching uh, as best they can and they are hauled back on on ropes to stop them you know doing any damage to people uh, and they they lead the procession in their carnival celebrations uh, and, but they are really quite intimidating not like our Whittlesea straw bear who's just cuddly this and again, these these costumes are constructed and they have to be cut out at the end of the proceedings afterwards. One or two others from Germany, which we haven't, I haven't personally seen, uh, but these these are great images, and I'd just like to share them with you for a for a little while. And this particular one is one that comes out on the 12th of December, the start of Carnival. Because Carnival goes from the 12th of December right away through the, the winter all the way to Shrove Tuesday. Uh, and these, 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 this particular bear comes out uh, on the 12th of December. Um, and I am led to believe that this particular costume is made every year. So there's an awful lot of work goes into that particular bear or costume. I have a friend in Germany who has no, made a notation of 190 straw bears in Germany alone. Uh, in the Rottweil and the Black Forest areas. So we weren't unique, just just in England. And this is Whittlesea Straw Bear in Germany. And he really did ride a bike down the street, but I wouldn't let him go into Carnival with the bike because we had to return it in one piece. But we had to have a picture and that's fabulous stuff. You'll notice this this particular English bear is a lot taller than than uh, the well, the one we built in England, basically because again we're using old-fashioned oat straw, which is a lot bigger and longer nowadays than wheat straw. Then back to Whittlesea. In two thousand and nine, we were told that the police could not stop. The traffic on the A605 unless there was an incident so we had to turn the whole th procession and things upside down um, and not process across what we euphemistically called the inner bypass or the inner relief road uh, which is unfortunate but um, just one of those things and you will notice that we've got a considerable number of people now on the street watching. We've got quite a big band and two bears dancing up and 
the street. But in 2009, there they are still dancing. Stephen had saw dancers. And then a couple of years later, we had three bears on the street outside what is now our little headquarters or what used to be our headquarters the letter b so lots of children involved in this uh, event now and really quite important that they are as well the chairman of the town council the late ursula cuff when she retired was so impressed with the effect that Straw Bear had on the town and its identity and everything else. She arranged for this statue to be placed in the Garden of Rest in the centre of town to honour Straw Bear itself. Uh, and this was, this was us attending the opening of that particular statue. And he's still there. And when we go by, we give him a wave so he doesn't get upset being there on his own and uh, it's a great pointer in the town as to just how important straw bear is to Whittlesea now so much so that the street furniture is corn related and on top of this thatched building in the middle of the town is a straw bear uh, and that was the instructions on the owner of this this building to actually when he got his roof rethatched he instructed the thatcher to put a straw bear on the top of the roof um, I think there's probably more fiberglass in that than straw but <laughs> he's still there but he's looking a little bit worse for wear now that's been up a few years now but uh, yeah and this is just a, another indication of how effective the event has been adopted by the and embraced by the town. So much so that some of my friends asked me, didn't ask me, they just told me that they would put me forward for the British Empire Medal and I was awarded it in 2013. Uh, Queen's Birthday Honours List for my contribution to music and community in Whittlesea. And these are the sort of crowd scenes we had in 2016. Uh, and you can probably understand now and appreciate just how important this event is now to the town. This was after the bear has left and everybody was just milling around having a chat and uh, finishing off their, their beer and just generally, generally socialising. And this is the sort of band that we have heading round the streets now. It, it goes up and down depending on, on the year. This young lady is my granddaughter. This young lady is his daughter. So there is a, a real sort of connection between pe the adults and the children to the event. This is my grandson. And this lady here, this is her son in this particular costume. And this one as well. So families are involved. And these are just a few pictures of the dance teams that we had uh, over the last few years. Children's dance teams, four in total, four, four junior schools and four dance teams. Sadly, the sword team doesn't, doesn't gather anymore, but uh, it may come back. They're still here, Gog Magog. A couple of characters that turned up that year in 2018. I don't know who they are. They just appeared and then went home. You know, just part of the event. 
But this is quite important because these people have got nothing to do whatsoever with the organisation. But they feel as though they should join in the spirit of things, get dressed up in silly costumes or cartoon costumes. And these 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 guys have been on 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 this pub at this pub wall for the last four or five straw bears and each year they wear a different hat and i don't i don't know where they come from i don't know who they are they just turn up and just want to be part of the event more pictures from 2018 and i think what i'm trying to try to what we've been trying to do is just show the diversity of dance styles that the British have um, and to effectively in, at, in a town that was a folk desert in some respects. And the important thing I think is that it is colourful. And here we have three bears. This was in 2020. Jasper, my son, my grandson, Douglas, my son, and myself as three bears. Noah has been a bear. Paul Cornell has been a bear. And Robert Taylor has been the keeper of the bears for as long as I can remember. And that was a special celebration of three bears on the street for that year in 2020 and that is the last time I will get in the costume ever because I'm afraid I just am not physically able to do it <laughs> but in 2021 the straw bear didn't dance out on straw bear day but in order to beat the lockdown we did turn out on Christmas Eve with the bear that was built that year and he went up the street, round the corner, and back in the house again. So he did, he was there, maybe just a little bit premature. And that's how it ends in a great heap and a bonfire. Um, there's no symbolic significance to this, it's just a way to end the event and draw a line under the event and just say that's it go home now we'll see you again next year there's no religious significance to the bonfire it came out of my head although the pagans would like to think it's evidence of this of this being a pagan ritual um no i don't agree with you sorry in fact probably the best thing we could do nowadays was take it down the local tip and get it recycled rather than burn it <laughs> but it is just a nice way of saying the end and this is our statement about how we invite people to our event and it's just by invitation we don't tell them what they should wear or how they should wear it or what they should do we just say it's based on the British heritage and we don't interfere with them. However, we resist very strongly any outside organisation trying to tell us what we should be doing. Uh, and because this is ours and it's our way. And this is a lovely quotation from William Palmer, who was a molly dancer in Little Downham. The younger people don't understand it. They don't know what it's for, but they do it for a bit of sport. At the turn of the year, all the fields were brown. In the days when I was young. Corn in the barn, frost on the ground, and never a green shoot sprung. Then the ploughmen came with their hobnail boats, and the molly dance rich and slow. 
And with magical plays and songs of the land they bade the corn to grow. Only once a year, penny for the plough boy to keep us in good cheer and multiply the rag rain. Only once a year, penny for the plough boy, speed the plough till the year turns round again. Well, they ploughed and they sowed and they harrowed him in, and the rain from heaven did fall. The sun did shine and the wind did blow, when it soon grew amazing tall. When the corn was ripened, the harvesters came, and the barns and the breweries rang. When all was safely gathered in, they lifted their voices and sang. Only once a year, penny for the plough boys, to keep us in good cheer and multiply the rag rain. Only once a year, penny for the plough boys, comes round again. But now the seasons are all turned round, we're a slave to the great machine. Fields are ploughed in high summer time, by the end of the year they're green. Gone are the trades, the horses, the families that follow the seasons round. And the old pubs close, cause it can't resound to a fiddle or a country song. Only once a year, penny for the plough boys to keep us in good cheer and multiply the grain. Only once a year, penny for the plough boys, speed the plough till the year turns round again. But the strength and the music and dancing and songs that have lasted a thousand years. The strength and barley, malt and hops brewed into a country beer. But the spring and the step of the old straw bear make a driver leap to the sky. And when the molly men come to speed the plough, they lift their glasses and cry. Only once a year, penny for the plough boys, to keep us in good cheer and multiply the grain. Only once a year, penny for the plough boys, speed the plough till the year turns round again. Penny for the plough boy! Brilliant, thank you Brian. Um, do you want to stop screen sharing now? And uh, I'll stop share. Brilliant. So we'll hand it over to Douglas. Oh, have, you, have you got any questions yet, Douglas? <laughs> oh, I've seen all the people now. <laughs> What's I your had... call? <laughs> I haven't had any questions come through to me. So um, if anyone does want to ask a question, you can put oh, their hand up. Sure, they will. We just need to wait a bit. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Do you want to take them, uh, Douglas? Can you see the queue? Yes, yep, yeah. I can see that. Um, so I think first in the list we've got Green Baldwin. Do you want to unmute and then you can ask your question? Hi there. Thanks very much, Brian. That was great. Uh, I don't know. I know it's not an academic um, presentation, but it was fabulous as it was. But what can you tell us? What do you know about the origins, where it comes from, and uh, you know? Uh... Absolutely nothing. Um, <laughs> there are newspaper reports in the middle of the eighteen hundreds, but that's it. I've asked. I've asked um, various people locally like uh, um, the, the director of Peterborough Museum and, and various other other people of, the, of that type where they think it comes from and I just get a negative response they don't know we don't know um, someone suggested it could be Nordic um, I'm my feelings are that it possibly was influenced by people coming across the North Sea from from the Central Europe, uh, basically, 
uh, down the Rhine and then across the sea to to East Anglia, but uh, we we haven't a clue. <laughs> So oh, that, 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 that's sort of what I expected you to say in many ways. Uh, <laughs> but that leads to the next question, which is something I didn't know how, how prolific straw bears were in Germany. So did you, have you asked the Germans uh, what they know about the origins of the festival there? Well, they or just shrugged the their, they shrug their shoulders and just say, oh, it's a carnival. Oh, OK. We've always done it. <laughs> I don't think there's any, uh, any acknowledged symbolism any longer. I mean, you you can you can if you devil around enough, then you, yeah, you could you could call you could say it was bear worship or corn corn god worship or something like that. But I mean, it's all very tenuous, and and my view is that what the heck, you know, it's a good it's good fun. Let's just do it. Yeah, thanks, fabulous. Thanks very much, Brian. Cheers. Um, next on the list, I had Eve Hurst. Hi, um, thanks so much. This is so lovely to, to hear about this. Um, I'm a student currently doing design anthropology like as a project on folk dance, particularly Morris dance. And I'm really interested to know like how communities are affected by Morris dance. I know you mentioned that a bit, like does it bring people together, things like that. Yeah, I mean, the, the whole the whole concept of the event, it was just allowed to develop naturally. But it, it, from my point of view, um, it was always important to me that we were giving the general public an indication of just the broad spectrum of British traditional dance. Um, and, you know, that was important because when I first moved to Whittlesea in 79, it was a folk desert. I thought I was moving to the country and it would be all full of all these, you know, quirky folk, uh, folky people and, and, and traditional things. And it wasn't. The, the, the only thing people seemed to be interested in was, uh, it was American music and, uh, and that was it. Pop music, basically. Okay, thank you. And and why do you think that this revival is so important then for community? I think it just it, it it's important to me because it it just it is an opportunity to, for for certainly locals to see things and traditions, dance traditions in particular that they'd never even thought of or, or heard about. Mm. If you want to, if you want to email me, um, I'll, you know, I'll help you out as much as I possibly can with, you know, any references that I've got. That'd be amazing. Uh, um, if you, you know, if you want, you know, you want to help with the, with the research that you're doing. Yeah, where can I find your email? Um, it's strawbear mm -hmm. at btinternet.com. Thanks so much. That goes for anybody if they want, you know, want to contact me personally, and and that I'm I'm quite happy with 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 that. Great, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, the next on my list, I have Sue Bass. Thank you. That's I've, I've pronounced Hello. That right. Hi. Um, Hello, I really. Hi. I'm interested in the German connection. The town I live in is East Grinstead and they're twinned with a town called Mindelheim in Germany and they have a big festival every three years called the Funsberg Fest. But if your great grandmother was a goose girl or your great grandmother was something else, you stay in the family. So how do you choose who's in the straw bear? <laughs> um, we, we have an organisation which we call ourselves the Straw Bearers. Right. And uh, the, 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 the person who drives the straw bear comes from within that organisation. Uh, and it just so happens that there is a sort of a family continuation now. Uh, I was a straw bear, my son was a straw bear, my grandson's a straw bear, and the Cornell family is exactly the same. Uh, mm -hmm. the, 
Paul Cornell was a straw bear, his sons were straw bears, and their, his grandsons are straw bears. So it just sort of seems to happen. Okay. I don't know what we're going to do when we run out. We'll have to find somebody, I suppose. But it's not easy because you need to have people of the same build. Right, okay. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay. Uh, Stella, you're next, please. I was just going to ask a quick question. It's more to do with the straw and the nature of the straw. So um, I'm from Dancar Shorten in South East London, and we have the Straw Bear Festival in um, around uh, harvest time. And I just wonder whether there was any link to Straw Jacks. Sorry, we have Straw Jack. Whether there was any links to Straw Jacks and that sort of thing in the seasonality. I mean, there could very well be. I mean, there is, there is, um, there's another festival in Northumberland uh, where they have a bale fire where they at the at the uh, at the end of harvest, uh, and they and they have a bonfire. Um, they they're all sort of tenuous li links with the straw, but I I firmly believe that people use straw as a costume material because there was a lot of it. And there will be an element of, of copy cutting as well. Someone will see something happening in a town and say, "Oh, we can do that and go home, you know go back to their own hometown and and try to replicate it. it yeah, it's just that it was more interesting with the fact that also the burning at the end, um, you know just that sort of similar cycle of, of things and how different it it's been this last year when burning hasn't been allowed. Obviously, we're later in the year, so we were able to do one this year, but we weren't allowed to burn the jack at the end. So, um, yeah, it was just interesting, really. Interesting time spent, too. Okay, thank you. Um, Anita, you're up next. Okay. Thank you very much. It was very interesting to hear about this. I was wondering, you, you talked about that it might come from from the north, uh, but I doubt that because I don't think we ever had anything like that. We right. use straw uh, a lot for decorations around Christmas. Uh, for instance, one city is always making a very big straw uh, buck, I think you call it. Uh, it's 30 meters high and uh, <laughs> <laughs> they try to save it for Christmas, but someone is always getting there, putting a fire to it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the only thing I know about uh, straw in the in in this uh, kind of way. I don't. I never think we did anything dancing with it or something. But it's an interesting question. I will look into it really. Yeah, to see if well, it is. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you for that. That that was interesting. I mean, at the end of the day, what we do in Whittlesea in in now is completely contrived. I'm sure they didn't have dance teams and things in town on Straw Bear Day in at the, at the turn of the 1800s. It was just the bear on the street. And I, you know, by the introduction of dance teams to the event, was I was trying to to spread the appeal. Yeah. If, like to make yeah. it more public friendly, if you understand yeah. what I'm saying. But, but uh, yeah. We have a lot of. of, of uh, uh, dance teams, uh, folk dance teams in Sweden. So, so it surprises me that we will never, never come to this kind of, of mm. dance. Mm. It's very interesting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Caro, Caro, is that pronounced right? So if not, do you yes. want to ask your question? <laughs> yes. Ooh, I'm in a dark room, <laughs> like a cellar. Um, it wasn't really a question. I just wanted to let uh, Brian know that there is a tune. A, uh, it's not a song. It's a tune that has been written called The Little Bear. Oh. And uh, you won't know that because 
Uh, it was written by my son, composed, I mean, I suppose. Uh, and being an unassuming chap, he hasn't told anyone. But honestly, it's a really good <laughs> tune. It's a tune. It's a jolly good tune. It's very sweet, actually. Uh, he's a folk musician and he makes concertinas. He's, he and his wife, Chloe Middleton Metcalf, are well, quite well known in the folk music scene. So a, a song, a, a tune exists. Perhaps one day it will get to you. Well, I hope so. I'd like to hear a, a sound bite of that. Certainly. I know. Yeah. The, the, one of the very first things, his teen rebellion was to become a Morris dancer. Yeah. <laughs> he said, Mum, I'm going to become a Morris man. And I said, you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think your father and I would approve. And then uh, after he proved us wrong and we realised it was rather cool, uh, and also associated with pubs with very good beer, which all seemed quite good. Um, he said, Mum, you've got to take me to the Straw Bear Festival. And uh, I th I've worked it out here whilst you were talking, and I think it was 2007. And uh, we went, and I have seen all these, uh, many of the photographs she shared, so that was all very familiar. And uh, it was wonderful, and it was a most impressive you know it's impressed upon our memories thank you so it was a significant experience and now he's gone on to be a, a, a well he's belonged to many many morris sides he's sort of quite well known so there we are now you know there is a song oh lovely perhaps the little bear will dance to it one day yes i hope so <laughs> thank you and um, that is the last hand up i've got um, <laughs> well, who's got his hand up? <laughs> Zach, do you have a question, Waco? <laughs> no, it's not a question. Okay. Uh, many years ago, I was reading a book by a Dutch woman about her war memoirs uh, being caught behind the Russian lines when the Russians advanced uh, towards the end of the Second World War. And she was interned in a prison camp. And uh, some Italian prisoners of war would every now and again get up, dress in straw, dance around the camp, and rattle a can in the hope to get a few bits and pieces, uh, either money or bread or whatever. So it seems that uh, there was a tradition of this uh, in Italy, as well as uh, the uh, north of Europe. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I have, I have seen carnival characters from Italy, certainly northern Italy, uh, which have been straw related, let me put it that way. Um, I can't, I can't think of where the pictures are now, but um, yeah, the, and I think basically it's 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 that part of Europe. And as I said to the an earlier lady, lady earlier, it was uh, it, there was a lot of copycatting go, goes on. You know, people will see something and they'll they'll take it back to their home and want to repeat it, and and then it morphs into something something else. Uh, and uh, but when does it? When does an event become a tradition? I'll ask. I'll ask the assembled group. When does an event become a tradition? Because I'm I was uh, Brian Shule's um, book. Uh, of traditions which was published about 30 year ago uh, he he didn't mention straw bears and when I actually asked him about it he just poo pooed straw bear and said oh well I wouldn't put that in my book because it's only a folk festival hi can I well, just uh, have a word sure thank Let's you um, I'd like to congratulate Brian on it really excellent talk um 
in answer to the question, when does it become a tradition? When I lived in Gloucestershire, we, we, it, it was always said that if you did it twice, it was a tradition. <laughs> um, and uh, here in my own village of Somerton in North Oxfordshire, um, about uh, 10 years ago, um, a, a, a chap had taken over a house that had an orchard and um, hadn't been kept up very well. So he, he tried to improve the quality of the trees. And uh, one, one day he said, um, oh, I've tried making some cider out, out of my trees. He said, and uh, it didn't turn out very well. And I said, well, did you wassail them? And he looked at me and said, what on earth is that? Um, and the next time I saw him or saw his wife, she said, hey, you told my husband about wassailing. What is it? And I told her and she said, well, OK, we'll do that then. Um, so I organised it and became the master of ceremonies and we're, and we're still doing it all these years later. And it, it, it just gets bigger and bigger. So I know I know exactly how, how you feel about your your strawberry. And I think you've done an absolutely wonderful thing. Um, and I discovered the straw bear via Rattlebone and Plowjack as well. And um, I went and saw the, uh, the, the, I've got a sister who lives in Meeple. Now me being living in Oxfordshire and her living in Meeple, we, we don't get to see each other very often, but I took advantage of her proximity to Whittlesea about 30 years ago uh, and came over and saw the straw bear. And I thought it was absolutely fantastic. Um, uh, but uh, in your talk, I was fascinated to see a picture of the Meeple Molly. Um, and although my sister lives there, I'd never heard of them. So um, <laughs> I'm going to have to talk to her about that. Uh, but absolutely wonderful, Brian. Thank you so much. Thank you, David. Okay. Anybody else got any questions or anything? Well, if we're out of questions, then it's uh, to say a big thank you to uh, Brian and Douglas for uh, a great talk. And if you've enjoyed the talk, um, if you could pop a few quid into their, um, I'll send it, it's in the emails, so their charity for the Whittlesea Mayor's Charities, that would be lovely. And if you could all unmute yourselves, give you a few seconds, and then we'll give them a round of applause. <laughs>